Welcome to worship. Here at Nokomis Heights Lutheran Church. Hey, Pastor Steve. Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I am good. Good. Do you see this beautiful artwork? It is gorgeous. It is amazing. We wanted to today highlight the artwork that our new communications coordinator, Holly, has been producing each week that we've been gathering for worship during our Fences and Wells worship series. So yeah. We're going to come around front now and talk about these beautiful pieces of artwork for just a minute. Okay. All right, ready? Here okay, we go. Okay, here we go. So as you know, for the last few weeks, we've been talking about fences and wells, what it means to gather around a well of living water, not creating fences that keep people out and other people in, but creating a well where all people can gather and drink from the fountain of God's goodness. Um, so Holly, who is our new communications coordinator, happens to also be a fabulous artist. I didn't know just how fabulous she was. <laughs> when we talked about doing these paintings for Nakoma Heights. So this was the first week um, when we talked about the woman at the well. And you see here the woman is in the bottom corner and her hair is swirling around into a heart-shaped well. And Holly made this uh, painting magnetic. So all of the people on here are uh, people that, uh, uh, different folks and um, kids at Nokomis Heights have painted representing themselves um, as part of this community. 
which is pretty cool. If you want one of these magnetic people to draw on, please let us know. Email us and we will get you one. Yeah. And um, we'll make sure that your, your person is on here as well. The are second you, week. Are you it, on there? I haven't made one yet. Have you? No, I haven't. Oh my goodness, that's I, bad. We should make one. Yeah, we should. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'll make yours, you make mine. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then the first week, we talked about our core value of what it means to be centered in Jesus. And uh, Holly read the paragraph that the council had written about being centered in Jesus. And this is the beautiful piece of artwork that she came up with. I'm going to tell you what I love about it, and then I'm wondering what Pastor Steve loves about it. Um, I love how um, it represents all four seasons, that God comes into our lives and is part of every season. I love how she kind of makes the tree there into the cross that pierces Jesus' hand, and how Jesus transforms on this side from death into life. The crown of thorns becomes flowers. I like that Jesus is both masculine and feminine. Um, what do you like about it? Or I really like the I like the variety of colors for Jesus, representing the wonderful diversity of humanity in the world. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the symbols for communion down below yeah. the cup and the wheat. Yep. Yeah, it's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. And then mm. last week we talked about the core value of collaboration. Yes. And she came up with this beautiful piece of artwork. And Holly said she was, she's was she been studying recently about how trees in the forest communicate with one another um, to protect each other and to help each other grow. Um, and how the whole earth is really an ecosystem of collaboration, that God calls on all of creation to work together. And if all creation didn't work together, then none of us would be here That's and right. none of us would survive. And so um, she made the people part of the tree. Um, and you can see honeycombs and bees and um, sea creatures and forest creatures everywhere. And the people working together to form this beautiful um, tree. And I, this one just is so deep yes. <laughs> like there's yeah. so much depth in it so that it really speaks to me what what are your thoughts yeah well uh last week for the children's message the kids loved it yeah. picking out all the different animals that are are pictured all through the painting um and and they too they quickly got the, that the people formed the tree um, and how the tree draws life from uh, down below, from the, mm -hmm. the ground, from the water, um, and how the animals around are all part, yeah, of this one marvelous creation and collaborate together to make it what God wants it to be. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty incredible. So we are so grateful for Holly yeah. and the numerous gifts yeah. that she brings to our community. <laughs> Um, and, you know, speaking of all of these, um, our core value that we're talking about for this week is creativity. Um, what, it, what does it mean to be um, a, a church that is wildly creative and uh, um, plays in creativity, but also uh, co-creates with God for the sake yeah. of the world? Yeah. So we'll hear more about that later in yeah. the sermon. And, yeah. and then you'll see that piece of artwork hopefully next week on Video Worship. And actually, one thing that, that I think uh, was creative right from the start of Nokomis Heights is that there's no parking lot. <laughs> that, I mean, every church I've ever been at has a parking lot. And right from the start, Nokomis Heights said, we are a part of this neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I think that's just fabulous. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, and also the creativity of the stained glass and the yeah. music that comes from the organ. And I mean, creativity has long been part of this church. So yeah. it seems appropriate that that become a core value that we celebrate yeah. together. Um, Monday is Indigenous Peoples Day. And so we would like to begin our worship with a prayer uh, on behalf of and in repentance of our uh, complicity with regards to uh, how indigenous people have been treated in this land and a renewal of how we move forward. So let's pray. Oh, great spirit, God of every people and every tribe, we come to you as your many children to ask your forgiveness and guidance. Forgive us for the colonialism that stains our past, the ignorance that allowed us to think that we could claim another's home for our own, 
heal us of this history. Remind us that none of us were discovered since none of us were lost, but that all are gathered within the sacred circle of your community. Guide us through your wisdom to restore the truth of our heritage. Help us to confront the racism that divides us as we confess the pain that it caused to the human family. Call us to kinship, mend the hoop of our hearts, and let us live in justice and peace through Jesus Christ, the one who came, that all people might live in dignity. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Amen. pray together the prayer of the day. Creator God, you, you formed, formed us in your image, image which means we were made to create. create. May, May we be led by your spirit to celebrate creation in all of its forms. We are grateful for painters, musicians, bakers, knitters, quilters, dancers, and all who embody your spirit of creation. Give us a spirit of joy as we create a space of welcome for your people. Amen. Amen. Today's reading comes from the first chapter of the book of Genesis. Then God said, Let us make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Today's Gospel reading comes from the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew. Let me tell you why you are here. You are here to be salt, seasoning that brings out the God flavors of this earth. If you lose your saltiness, how will people taste godliness? You've lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Now that I put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, this generous Father in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today in our Fences and Wells sermon series, we're talking about our core value of being creative at Nokomis Heights. And we're doing that through the lens of the creation story, uh, what it means to be created in the image of God. As I was kind of trying to think about where to go with this sermon this week, I um, thought about the fact that several years ago I wrote a blog. I had a a blogspot blog called imintograce.blogspot.com if you want to go see my old writings. Um, and so I looked up um, a blog I had written called Imago Dei, um, in the image of God is what that means in Latin. And I read this first paragraph and I just want to read it to you. Driving to preschool with my five-year-old one particularly grumpy morning, the conversation about God's image happened to come up. My daughter said to me with a teenage voice inflection, Mom, there's this girl named Bella in my class. She's cuter than me, and I don't like it. At this moment, I refrained from saying, well, Bella does mean beautiful. Instead, I said, you know, Amelia, God created you perfectly the way he wanted you to be. How do you think that makes God feel when you compare yourself to someone else and, and think they are better? To which she responded, blah, blah, blah. I took a deep breath and decided to be mommy instead of pastor. So I said to her, Amelia, I think you are the cutest five-year-old in the whole world. And she said, just wait till you see Bella. Now, that was funny, right? Like that was a funny interaction with my five-year-old. But as I'm looking back, you know, 10 years older now than I was when I wrote that blog, I thought, boy, have I grown in my understanding of what it means to be in the image of God. I would have done so many things differently in that conversation. I would have started by not shaming her about how she makes the God feel. But we could all look back on our previous selves, couldn't we, and um, see the mistakes that we made in parenting and work and all sorts of things. But I guess where we were and where we've come represents growth. Uh, so today I want to think about what it really means to be made in the image of God. And we're doing that through Genesis chapter 1. Uh, we read this morning, or today, um, in verses 26 and 27. So I'm just going to read that again for us. And I want you to pay attention um, to who God says God is. Then God said, let us, that's the word I want you to pay attention to, let us, Make humankind in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created humankind in God's image. In the image of God they were created, male and female, God created them. I think we've probably all heard those verses read a thousand times in our lives. Um, and as a pastor, it's my job to sometimes go down the rabbit hole of scripture and ask the question, what is really being said here? So first of all, I want to start with the fact that um, in verse 27, um, it says, let us create humans in our image. And then in English, we hear male and female, they were created. In the image of God, they were created. Now, when scripture in English says male and female, that's actually wildly inaccurate from the original Hebrew. In the original Hebrew, the words that we hear translated male and female are actually the words remember and receive. What do we do with that? 
it really busts open this whole notion of gender that so many people are struggling with in our world today. And it also busts open the notion of God as a white man in the clouds with a long white beard reaching out his hands and creating earth. It opens up our minds to imagine a much broader version of who God is and what it means to be created in God's image. Back to verse 26. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image. Who is us and who is our? If God is uh, God creating from the heavens above, who, who is this plural being that Genesis is talking about here? Now, Christian theologians from years have, for years have um, said this was the first nod to the Trinity, God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But that's when we look at Scripture through a Christian lens, which is really looking at Scripture backwards. Remember that um, our Jewish neighbors, uh, and Jesus was Jewish, um, had this, this Torah before uh, Jesus ever walked the earth. And they don't believe in a Trinitarian God necessarily. So when we look at verse 26, let us create God in our image without a Christian lens, what does that mean in its purest form? There's an ancient rabbi named Ramban from the year 1192, so almost a thousand years ago, um, who had a theory that what God was doing in these verses when God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness, was inviting all of creation to join together in making humankind. So remember before this, you know, humans were the last, the last art of creation. Before this, it was the fish and the birds and um, the plants and the sky and the seas. And so uh, Rabbi Ramdan's theory was that God was inviting all of created order to come together and together to come up with this prototype <laughs> that is the human being. So when we look at scripture through that lens, it gives us a whole new view of what it means to be created in God's image, doesn't it? You know, that idea by Rabbi Ramdan had me look back into the beginning of the creation story and notice that there are a couple of other places where God invites creation to create along with God. In verse 11 of chapter 1 of the book of Genesis, God said, let the earth put forth vegetation. Let the earth put forth vegetation. Not, now I will invent plants, but let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed and fruits and trees of every kind. And it was so. And in verse 20, God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures. So what does it mean to be created in the image of God? if God invites all creation to create together. The only thing that we know about God at this point in the story of Genesis and the story of creation is that God is creative and God is collaborative. God is a painter mixing all of the hues, the blues of the sky and the violets of the flowers. God is a sculptor shaping the humpback whale and the platypus and the elephant. God is a musician giving song to the birds and a voice to the dolphins. God is an engineer designing systems for everything to work together. So what if being created in God's image has absolutely nothing to do with what we look like? nothing to do with our gender or our outer appearance, and everything to do with how we become co-creators with God in this world. What if being made in God's image is really about what we create in this world, what we leave behind in this world? Creating is one of our most basic instincts. Have you ever put finger paint in front of a toddler? or Plato 
in front of a group of first graders. The instinct is always to create something and to have pride in that creation. Look what happened during the pandemic when we were all quarantining. We made bread to the point that stores ran out of yeast. We wrote poems about what it was like to live in isolation. We learned how to knit and to paint. Some of us even made babies. <laughs> or think about what happened after George Floyd was killed and the riots erupted in the city of Minneapolis. From the ashes of those riots, artwork emerged. Murals that still stand on Lake Street of George Floyd and of diverse people living their lives in our city. Systems were created quickly and overnight to house people and to feed people and to make sure that people were cared for who were misplaced by the riots. Policies are still being created to help dismantle racism in our city. We were created to create. We are God's image. We are called to create in this world. We are called to create love. We are called to create life. We are called to create food that nourishes bodies. We're called to create systems that uplift people. We are called to create communities uh, that embrace diversity. We are called to create artwork that expresses the, the deepest pain and the deepest hope that the human heart can hold. We are co-creators, and what we choose to create in this world matters a great deal. It matters a great deal to the world around us, and it matters a great deal to our Creator God. In Matthew chapter 15, Jesus sheds just a little bit more light for us on what it means to show up as God's image in the world. Jesus is in the middle of the Sermon on the Mount, and, and he has just gone through the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed, blessed, blessed. And then he points to his disciples and says to them, to all of these people, all, all of the hurting ones, all of the poor ones, all of the sad ones in the world, you are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the world. You have a job to do. You, created in God's image, created as a co-creator with God, have a job to bring salt that flavor that makes every flavor just a little tastier. To bring light, that element that illuminates the world, that helps us all see better in dark spaces. You are called to be salt and light in this world. You know, so often the church throughout history has been seen as the place where you go and you fold your hands and you bow your head and you reflect and you make your children sit and behave <laughs> and you check the box and then you leave. Uh, but that's not what God calls us to be, church, as God's image. God calls us to be in God's image, which means we're called to be wildly creative. God calls us to be in God's image, which means we're called to bring a spice and beauty and life and light to the world. And so Nokomis Heights, when we crafted these uh, core values for this church, we talked about the vibrant community that Nokomis Heights already is, but how much more vibrant we even want to be going into the future. And so we wrote this paragraph for our core value, Creative. It says, created in God's image, we were made to create. We will share the gospel in unexpected ways, like cooking, baking, sewing, knitting, painting, music, sculpture, writing, video, dance, acting, and photography. We will not be afraid to take risks and dream boldly. 
we will worship, communicate, and walk with others so that more and more people will hear and understand the message of God's unconditional love and grace for all people. That is how Nokomis Heights is called to be salt and light in this world. What a gift it is to have a generous God who invites all of creation into the process of continuing to create and recreate in this world. We are invited, having been created by that generous God, to share salt and light, to create and recreate God's image in this world, images of love and community, images of collaboration and creativity, images that make the world brighter and spicier and saltier and better and more beautiful. So let's join together in being a community of creativity and in being people of creativity who go out into the world, shining God's light and sharing God's love wherever we go. Amen. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Come unto me, all ye who are weary. Come unto me, ye who carry heavy burdens. Come unto me, come unto me, and I will give you rest. Come unto me, O ye who are weary, come unto me, ye who carry heavy burdens, come unto me. Creating God, you call forth different gifts of creativity and all of us made in your image. Encourage us to welcome the diverse creativity of the whole church in cooking, baking, sewing, knitting, painting, music, sculpture, writing, video, dance, acting, teaching, building, photography, and more. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Nurturing God, you bring forth crops from the soil and bounty from the trees. Increase the produce of the land and bless all who toil in fields and orchards. Provide for good working conditions and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Empowering God, you offer compassion for those who are overlooked or forgotten. Open the hearts of local, national, and world leaders to show compassion and love for their neighbors. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Sheltering God, in Jesus you traveled among us with a place without a place to lay your head. Provide safe places to sleep and rest for those who have no place to live. Sustain ministries that offer food, clothing, and peace of mind, especially loaves and fishes, our Savior's shelter, and community emergency service in Minneapolis. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Renewing God, you bring life out of death. Help us part with those things that are no longer beneficial to us and open our hearts to see where new life is budding. We pray for those who are suffering in any way, that hearts, minds, and bodies might be renewed. We pray especially for Casey Austad, Linda Austad, Jerry Casterton, Jennifer Harris, Rich Groner, Dee Levine, Charlie Olson, Blanca Raniolo's sister Nellie, Eric and Pike Perum, and all of those who we name in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. to me all ye who are weary come unto me ye who carry heavy burdens come unto me come unto me and I will give you rest come unto me to me, ye who carry heavy burdens, come unto me, come unto me, and I will give you rest. Gathered into one by the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you, Steve. And also with you, Chris. And with you, Dana and invite you to share signs of peace if you are together with others um, in ways that you feel comfortable. Um, and other ways you might do that, uh, send an email or a handwritten note or make a phone call to somebody who you know could be cheered up by receiving the greeting of God's peace. As we receive our offering today um, in in-person worship this week, I've invited people to bring with them things that they have created. And I'm going to have them hold them up during the offering time and offer them to God as a sign of um, how we are living out this calling to be God's image in the world. So I want to invite you to find something that you have created. Now, people say to me all the time, but I'm not creative. And I just want to say, that creativity doesn't always have to do with art like this, right? You might create a spreadsheet. Dana, amen to that. <laughs> you might create um, a, a child, right? I mean, we, we all have this sort of creative power. You might be a gardener and like to, to plant flowers. You might have taken a photo that's really special to you and that's something that you've created in the world. You might be a writer and have, you know, 
maybe you wrote a letter or an email to someone. Um, I could bring so, 40 years worth of sermons. Right, you, you <laughs> could. Why don't you do that on Sunday? That'll be fun. <laughs> We, the point is, is that we, we all create in yeah. some way, shape, or form. And, and not all of us create things like this, but we all create our own forms of beauty and legacy um, that are the image of God in this world. Um, so celebrate the creativity that is in you today and offer that back to God um, as a celebration of God's generosity and, in, and creativity in creating us and the world in which we live. Pray together. God, God of, of abundance, abundance, you cause streams, streams to break forth in the desert, desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite, unite them with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, Christ our, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. We do have a couple of announcements. Um, one of those is that we have a forum on, or, or a series on mental health uh, beginning if you're watching this on Sunday, today, October 10th, which is um, World Mental Health Day. And that is on Zoom uh, tonight and for the next four weeks um, on Sunday evenings. Uh, so we have invited experts uh, from around the Twin Cities and we're joining together with Diamond Lake Lutheran Church and um, New Creations Church of God in Christ uh, to host this series as we um, recognize that many people um, have experienced mental health crisis as a result of the isolation of the pandemic um, and we are particularly concerned about our seniors and our teens and so um, we know that uh, these three women who are presenting will be able to speak into the hearts and lives of, of um, people who are uh, living with people who are suffering from mental health crisis or people who themselves are living through a mental health crisis. So we invite you to be part of, of those uh, sessions. Yeah. And you can find the links and the information for that on the Nokomis Heights website. Also, if you are a voting member of Nokomis Heights, a reminder to you that we have a special meeting of the congregation at 11 o'clock, so immediately following worship, uh, if you happen to be watching this on Sunday morning um, and are able to attend, we invite you to be part of that, where we um, are just approving a few more funds uh, to help finish up the kitchen and the organ repair. And I think it's available both in person and, and on, on Zoom. Zoom. Yes, yep. yes. Yeah. Very good. And that Zoom link would have been sent to your email. Yeah. Very good. And now receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.
Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.